Polestar has officially launched the much-anticipated Polestar 3, a fully electric premium sporty crossover. While the initial thrill of electric vehicles might have waned, the arrival of a new model from this up-and-coming automaker, committed to innovation, is something that demands attention. As the EV market evolves, Polestar remains focused on establishing a unique identity, distinct from its parent company, Volvo. Though Polestar shares its roots with Volvo, the Polestar 3 differentiates itself with performance-driven features. It offers ample power, large wheels, robust brakes, and various sport modes, elements that set it apart from Volvo's electric crossovers. Yet, like Volvo, it maintains a strong emphasis on high-quality interior and exterior design. A glance at its rear-side silhouette reveals a modern twist on Volvo's classic design language. The Polestar 3 is available in two versions, one with the optional performance pack and one without. Both models feature a rear-biased dual-motor setup, though they vary in range and power, with prices starting at $73,400. While this price tag is steep, the first model year includes the Plus Pack and Pilot Pack as standard, both packed with advanced features. We had the chance to spend a couple of days with Polestar in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, driving through the vast countryside in both versions of the Polestar 3, and came back with plenty of insights. Exterior Polestar's best design yet. The more time we spent with the Polestar 3, the more we appreciated its design, particularly the rear quarters, which evoke memories of the C30 and V40 hatchbacks. Despite these nods to the past, the design feels fresh and modern. The vehicle boasts an aggressive yet refined look, with sculpted fenders and short overhangs that emphasize its sporty character. This is further enhanced by the aerodynamic details like the front wing build into the hood, rear aero blades, and an integrated rear wing in the spoiler. The Polestar 3 boasts a wide stance, arriving from the factory with 21-inch wheels, a full-length panoramic glass roof, all LED lighting inside and out, and eye-catching Swedish gold Brembo brake calipers. Standard exterior features. Panoramic glass roof with illuminated Polestar emblem. Power tailgate with soft close and hands-free operation. Privacy acoustic laminated glass. LED headlights with active high beams. Full LED rear light bar with signature lighting. Welcome lighting and retractable door handles. Interior, Swedish elegance. Inside, the Polestar exudes a sense of spaciousness, lightness, and Scandinavian style, with high-quality materials and attention to detail that immediately stand out. However, not everything is simple. Polestar's decision to minimize physical buttons and controls by consolidating nearly everything, like the wing mirror and steering wheel adjustments, into the infotainment system feels like a tech-centric overreach. Even minor adjustments, such as moving the side mirror slightly, require stopping the car and navigating through a menu. While there may be an argument that memory functions reduce the need for frequent adjustments, the initial user experience feels cumbersome, especially for tasks that should be more intuitive. The silver lining is that the infotainment system itself is thoughtfully designed. Contextual controls are smartly implemented. For instance, when you park, the steering wheel controls automatically appear on the top layer, replacing driving-related icons. You'll also notice that Looking at the interior switches that remain on the steering wheel, they remain completely unmarked. It certainly adds to the slick look of the interior, and it shouldn't take long to learn through ownership, but it requires the owner's manual to get started. We'll look at that more carefully when doing a full test drive review as a week should be long enough to internalize them. While it goes against our general attitude of if we have to open the user manual to perform simple functions, it's badly designed. We're not wholly against the idea, if well implemented. The annoying caveat to this is that it can only work if the physical buttons and functions are severely limited. It certainly would be frustrating if you had to learn the environmental controls without labels, for example. The question now becomes, is it worth the hassle to put the majority of controls that are typically physically operated on a touchscreen for the sake of not having any icons or words printed on or around switches? We're not so sure. Thankfully, we note there is a nice big volume knob in the center console. On the plus side, the driver's seat adjustment is one of the best we've come across. It's one big wheel located down the side of the front seat that's easy to find and manipulate, 
and logical to use. However, guess where the lumbar support controls are? On the touchscreen. The second issue we have is that Polestar has sunk a lot of effort into the interior materials. Whether it's ecologically friendly Napa leather, or even more ecologically friendly vegan and recycled materials. Yet the brand is chosen for a premium $70,000 plus electric SUV to use piano black plastic in its center consoles and on the switches. You can see in the photos above how bad it is for collecting dust and fingerprint smears. And there's a photo we haven't included of a switch on the steering wheel as the fingerprints on it are so clear it didn't seem smart to put it on the internet. There is no excuse for Polestar to be using piano black plastic. None whatsoever. We strongly suggest Polestar should change it for something more well Polestar-ish. Technology, big screen, next level tech. Polestar has brought in Google for its infotainment software needs. And behind the large 14.5 inch screen, Polestar uses the Qualcomm Snapdragon cockpit platform. The Snapdragon cockpit platform is where things like the contextual menus are based and powers the infotainment, while the Google system supplies the user interface, UI, and Google apps. The Google system does a great job of enhancing the user experience with familiar and intuitive features. The bold and obvious tiled UI is intuitive and snappy to react in the way you expect of a high-end phone or tablet. Finding the settings you need is equally intuitive as you go into the second layer of the menu system. And of course, Google Apps for the majority of services you might use are seamlessly built in. For example, we prefer Tidal over Spotify for music due to its higher resolution files, and it's just a quick download away. The good news is that if you're not into the idea of Google running your life and choose Apple instead, wireless CarPlay is built in. Sound system demands its own subheading. As we mentioned in the introduction, the Plus Pack and Pilot Pack come standard for the first model year, and that's a big list of extra features, including a monstrous and incredibly well-integrated 25-speaker Bowers and Wilkins audio system with Dolby Atmos. Using a lot of speakers in a car, and 25 is a lot of speakers, then giving the system 1,610 watts could easily be a mess of sound, but the engineering that's gone into matching the car and system is exceptional. You'll notice the tweeter on the dashboard is raised, and that's the level of detail Bowers and Wilkins has gone to. The engineers didn't want the sound to bounce off the concave windscreen while minimizing being muted by the dashboard. The result is super clean treble that threatens. 